what I'm going to present now is Sweden, uh, an example of uh, solutions to the problems that you defined. Uh, it's called the uh, Patient Overview Prostate Cancer, and that's actually a national project where all stakeholders are involved, patients, doctors, uh, uh, policy makers, head of departments. And uh, our goal is to improve uh, uh, prostate pa uh, patient care. And the nice thing, this morning I was at a meeting uh, receiving a lot of money to expand this project to other tumor types in Sweden too. I work as a clinical oncologist uh, in Gothenburg on the west coast of Sweden. I'm a total prostate cancer nerd, and even if you're not cancer nerds, everything that I'm going to describe today, uh, it, you can apply also to, to other tumor types. I work 24-7 since almost 25 years back with men with prostate cancer and their close ones. Um, and I love my job. Uh, but Five years ago, I was increasingly frustrated for, two, uh, for three reasons. First, I felt that the, the care that we were delivering in our cl clinic was extremely disease-centered. And I, treat, I don't treat uh, prostate cancers, uh, I treat men with prostate cancer. And it's not enough for me to ask them, what's the matter with you when they come to me? I have to ask them, what matters to you? Both these questions. And the reason why is that everybody who works in oncology knows that there is not one or two suggestions that you could give. The quality of life and the priorities of the patient matters when he is going to make an informed decision about his care. That was number one. And that's one part is organization, but one, the other part is information and how we give our information to the patients. The other frustration uh, was that I felt that we're spending millions of dollars on innovation that hopefully will change our way of thinking in a few years, but we spend hardly any money at all on how we should implement these innovations. And we take for granted that just because there is a new innovation, we believe that uh, clinics will take it up. And uh, Greg, you were discussing this. It's not going to happen, even in Sweden, with our system. It's, it takes a long time to implement new innovations. Uh, the third frustration was that we had a lack of quality control. I can easily get the numbers of radical prostatectomies, the number of radiation treatments that we perform every year, but I had no information on treatment response, side effects, the patient's quality of life. And if we're going to measure quality of care for cancer patients, we need to take into account these variables too. So is there a solution to this? Yes, there is. Sweden, uh, I think it's, a, it's an ideal situation in, in many ways. Greg, you mentioned that. We have a general tax-funded health care since long time back. Uh, there is no national health service. We have 22 or 21 counties that provide health care. And for cancer, we also have, and that's really a key point, I think, we have virtual regional cancer centers, six of them, and they have two important resp responsibilities. They um, print the national guidelines, and that's national groups with doctors, and they're also responsible for the quality control uh, with the national quality registers. One of this national quality registers uh, is the National Prostate Cancer Register. It's one of the largest databases for men with prostate cancer in the world. We have over 180,000 patients in this database. And we have a 98% capture rate versus the cancer registry. So we know everything about all men today in Sweden. Their cancer characteristics, their diagnostic workup, and their primary therapy. And the nice thing is that departments, they spend a lot of time in uh, reporting this data, but they can get it back soon. You know, in most quality registers, it will take two to three years but before the departments get the data back. That's not true in the prostate register. 
oh, I didn't do that. <laughs> um, because uh, the department can uh, get their data back in 24 hours. And I really think it's a key point that the content of the quality register reflects what's in the national guidelines. The patients, they need access to this quality control. What we have developed uh, in the last years in a, is an open, transparent reporting of all our data for 180,000 patients in uh, the database. And it's an interactive reporting system. It's a three-month delay, but it's, it's actually pretty much real-time data. And you can tailor reports for each unit so that you can benchmark. And what's actually happening right now is that the patient organizations, they educate their, uh, the patients in ratten, that we call it. So we have patients calling the hospitals asking, why are your waiting times so long? How many surgeons perform radical prostatectomies in your hospital? hospital and so on. I think it's really the best thing because it drives improvement. What has happened in the last few years is that for our chronic patients, our patients that we can't cure, that have cancer with metastases, the treatment options have increased dramatically. And this is a really big challenge in many respects. Uh, it's fantastic because I, we can prolong life and increase quality of life, but all these new treatments are very expensive. Uh, these are also the patients that suffer the most. So to, get, uh, uh, to be able to measure the cancer patient's journey uh, and uh, to, to see which patients they receive and the treatment responses, we needed a completely different way of uh, collecting these data. And we needed to, to find a way to present the whole patient's journey through uh, uh, his disease. And then we created something called the Patient Overview Prostate Cancer. And this is something I use every day in my clinic. I have the med medical record on one screen and the Patient Overview Prostate Cancer uh, on another screen. And what it actually shows is a timeline with all treatments given, all imaging, all radiation therapy. And this is interactive, so I can see exactly which date it was given. Uh, the performance status of the patients and all the blood tests. All this information that you can see in this graphical display is about 40 pages of text in a medical record system. And this has really transformed my whole consultation in my practice. Uh, it's built on a platform that's nationally available, both uh, also for private caregivers, and that's really the key. And we use the same language, that's also important. But today, me and my patients, we will have the consultation around the patient overview, so we have the same picture of his, his disease. And the other thing we do is that we collect patient-reported outcome measures before the visit. Uh, he will respond to 17 questions. We have interviewed several patients and came down to the 17 most common problems for these patients. And then we also show this in the patient overview. Uh, you can see there a circle with, um, we call them pieces of cake, the, the, the red ones these are symptoms that really bothers the patient. And then I can focus on the problems that really matters to the patient and try to solve them during the consultation. And also for patients where everything is green, it's actually self-empowerment. They feel, ah, oh, do I feel this good? And it has really changed since six months back and so on. Uh, and I guess I can see up to 30% more patients and they're more satisfied today than when we started this. The good side of this is that it also provides metrics for the Department on Performance. Today we know exactly how many patients that are on different drugs. Do we follow guidelines? How does our performance look over time? How are, uh, how, what does our performance look like compared to other clinics in Sweden? Uh, and this drives improvement. 
We can also look at treatment patterns on a population-based level, and this is pretty unique, I think, for Sweden. And the policymakers, the ones that are going to, to uh, pay for all these new treatments, they are extremely interested in this information. And the pharmaceutical industry, of course, this is real-world data. And there are few places, I think, in the world where you can get this kind of data. And also for the patients. Uh, one important thing, of course, is that when we get population-based data in this way, we can do fantastic observational studies. And it, there is something I call the cancer patient's yoke. As a cancer patient, and for their close ones, they often wish that the scientific evidence that we have today would be like it is in 15 years. And that is a frustration. Most people, uh, most patients handle that uh, by asking, can I con contribute my data so that it uh, can be better for patients in the next 10 to 15 years, or can you put me in a randomized trial? What we're trying to use the patient overview now is to increase inclusion into clinical trials, because since it's, the data is systematically put into the system, then we can match inclusion criteria and hopefully get the system to recommend this patient could be uh, included in this and this trial. Because today, it's uh, depending on if you're in a university clinic or the doctors you're seeing, and that's not okay. So what do we think about the future? I think my whole role as a doctor is changing right now. A lot of doctors feel threatened by the new digital technologies. I don't. I think we should embrace them. I am used uh, to practicing uh, evidence-based care that we put into the national guidelines. But what we recommend there is all the recommendations are on a group level. And the patient that comes to my clinic, he's not interested in knowing that you have a 10% less risk of dying in three years. He wants to know, am I going to survive until next summer so that I can uh, join at my uh, grandchildren's uh, uh, wedding? Or uh, is it worth taking a loan for a new car? And to, get, um, to, to be able to give him that kind of information, we need precision medicine. Precision medicine and biobanking is fantastic, but if we don't connect it to systematically collected clinical data, it's difficult. And this system can do that. And then, maybe finally, we will get uh, artificial intelligence, and like Dr. Watson, and so on. But I think there, uh, some people think that uh, the doctor's role will disappear. I don't. But I think uh, I want to take a part in developing this. And just the last uh, slide. Uh, our patients, just as everybody has said today, uh, their role is also changing from a passive object to an active subject. And that's really good. Uh, patients, they want to give us information on their symptoms and quality of life. It has even been proven now in randomized trials that patients that can give us this information, they have increased quality of life and they feel better. Uh, and they, and they sur survive longer. They want to have quality control, they want to know what we're doing and what we're not doing. Uh, and actually, they own their own data. This uh, patient overview prostate cancer, what we do today is to, to uh, use a printer and put it on paper, but in very close time, people will go into um, uh, our uh, uh, national system and reach all the information. They can do it today with all the medical records, and they will be able to do this with the patient overview too. And finally, they want to con contribute to research, and I think this was, will facilitate it, it in, in a, a good way. So, to conclude, it's uh, only by a common understanding of the real needs and the existing possibilities, and that, of course, depares, depends on where you live. It's quite different in Nigeria from Sweden and the States. But this is important because only then we can ask the right questions and find the meaningful answers. And this we have to do together with the patient for the future. Thank you. <laughs>